Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Shell Johnson about helping high achievers to create a lucrative, soulful, and abundant career path and life. Shelly Johnson, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. So excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited too. It's it's great to be with you. I'm excited we're able to connect. We're both busy and I know you have a lot of things going on. We're going to have to keep our episode today a little shorter and, and just short and sweet, but we're going to get right to the point. Uh, we're going to be talking about helping high achievers to create a lucrative, soulful, and abundant career path and life. As we get started, I wanted to share Shelly's bio with everybody. As a former corporate talent acquisition director and HR executive, Shelly Johnson has been coaching candidates, leaders, students, hiring managers, recruitment teams, and inclusion groups towards success for over two decades. She got tired of the corporate treadmill, feeling disconnected and disengaged, and launched her business in 2019 to partner with high achievers to help them reach their career goals and full potential. She specializes in working with women, people of color, and high achievers in STEM and STEAM through scientifically proven mental fitness coaching methods and a connected and genuine approach. She guides current employees and job seekers towards reaching their career goals and living their best life with wisdom and happiness. I love everything about that, Shelly. Wonderful. Uh, What a great passion. What a great focus in your career and in, in the work that you're doing. Before we launch into the conversation, anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context? Those 20 years in corporate were at companies like Lockheed Martin and Honeywell and Quest, and I'm just really blessed to bring all of that HR and talent acquisition knowledge to my clients and to your audience. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So let's really just dive right in. Um, Helping high achievers to create a lucrative, soulful, and abundant career path and life. I love the way you frame your work. Um, that, That comes directly from your framing. Uh, why, why do you focus so much on high achievers? First of all, maybe we can start there. And then let's talk about the intersection of a soulful and abundant life with the lucrative aspect that you mentioned. Sure. So I work with high achievers because as a high achiever, um, I just kept being promoted and going up and up and up. And it seemed like I was always living for other people. And I, I lost who I was. And so I understand that grind and that need to be very successful, but I wasn't living from a sulfur perspective. I was living from everybody else's perspective because I'm a people pleaser. And so I had to do a lot of work and you know how people have new year's resolutions. I came up, well, there's, there's a system where you pick one word And my word for the past two years has been pause because I'm always going, going, going. And being busy does not mean being successful. And so I had to pause and I had to do a lot of really deep, soul-centered, heart-centered work. And lucrative can be financial. It can be however you define lucrative. And so think about that from a high achieving perspective, it's kind of like, okay, I've, I've achieved this now, that high achievement monster, what's the next achievement? What's the next achievement? And it's almost like that song by you two, I still haven't found what I'm looking for or what that inner critic tells so many of us, which is I'm just not good enough. I'm not good enough to get to that level. I'm not, I don't have what it takes. They're not gonna listen to me or, so it just left me And from what I have found, many of my clients disillusioned as to they're living for the next achievement 
and they're forgetting who they are. So that's yeah. the first part of your question. Yeah. And can I just comment on that? Because the, the New Year's resolution piece that you were mentioning, uh, that resonated with me years ago. At, at some point, I, I came to a similar realization. I'm a high achiever. I, I'm always, you know, I don't feel like I'm like super ambitious in terms of like needing to like in and of myself, I don't care so much, but I, I, I see opportunities to do other things and I just want to achieve and I just want to do things and I want to help people and I want to say yes. And uh, so, so I just end up finding myself in, in that kind of similar um, mode as you were describing. So years ago, I wrote an article, this was maybe 12 years ago uh, about New Year's resolutions. Uh, and I, and pe people always talk about SMART goals and I actually wrote an article about making unsmart goals um, because the realization for me is that I need to let go. Like I, I don't need more goals. I don't need more um, stuff to motivate me. In fact, I need to, I need to, like you said, I need to pause. I need to take a breath. I need to do less. And uh, so that was kind of the focus of the article. I, I totally get that many people uh, are going to do very well when they set smart goals and they, they, uh, they, they set, uh, accomplishments for themselves that they're reaching for. Um, but for me and for many high achievers, we just find ourselves in that grind, right? Of just trying to constantly do more and more and never being satisfied with where we're at. And, and we just need to let go of that, I think. And, and do the, you know, many of the things that matter can't be measured. And many of the things that can be measured don't matter. Um, to, to quote the old saying, whoever said it, I don't know. Um, oh, I love that saying, and you're right. I have so many examples and stories of like what you're talking about. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So no, that, that's, that's it. You know, I think, I think uh, goals are great. Achieving is great. Uh, but also don't getting not getting yourself too wrapped up in achieving, especially when like in and of myself, I don't really care about certain things. I'm really only doing them because other people ask me to or because I want to please them or whatever. And that's no way to live your life. Like, take hold of your life, focus on what matters to you, uh, do those things well, and then let other stuff go and let other people have the opportunity to achieve in those other areas. That's so much easier said than done. And that's what is consistent, deep level, insightful work through what is your vision. And so I have a framework that I use with all of my clients and it really starts with your purpose and your vision and going deep and doing journaling and taking that time to pause. Now that is accompanied by and aligned with mental fitness, which when I say that, it's based on a program called Positive Intelligence, which is a six to seven week program by Shazad Shamin, a number one New York Times bestselling author and Stanford professor. And in those seven weeks, we really look at the judge that inner critic that plays with your brain and says, you can't do that. Or an hyperachiever is actually an accomplice or a saboteur because being such a hyperachiever and doing that grind does not allow you to live holistically if that is your sole focus. So we quiet that judge in your brain and work to bring out much more wisdom and how you navigate life through what we call the five sage powers, which are empathy, knowledge, activation, navigation, and the last one that is escaping me. But it's really looking at that pause. And I have so many stories of high achievers that I have worked with that just on vision and mental fitness that have decreased their stress, that have really become much more engaged in what they want to do in life. And when they were at this crossroads, I mean, I have a army officer in the US military that was in Afghanistan and was just now coming home that was completely stressed, very, um, you know, very, very stressed. So I worked with him. We decreased that judge in his brain because he had been um, put in a situation that was not, that he was out of control of, if you will, and did not really want for his future. However, he accepted that, demystified and, and quieted that judge. And in seven weeks, he was much less stressed, much more engaged, higher level of performance, 
and much more productivity, which in turn made the troops that way. And I can't come up with these stories, you know? I mean, it's, it's really about what is your vision? What is your mental fitness? And then what are the strategies and tactics to get you to where you want to go? And that's the framework that I use with my clients. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. And you talk about lucrative. Um, now you're using that term in a more inclusive holistic way than I think most people think about the word lucrative. They think in terms of money, right? Um, that you're going to have a lucrative career path. You're going to make lots of money. And that may be the case. Uh, and we can connect that here in just a moment. Um, but, but I think it leads really into those, the second two um, elements, which is soulful and abundance, uh, soulfulness and abundance, which is really important. And we can have a very lucrative um, in terms of soulful and abundant life. Uh, that I hope we're all striving for and that we can, uh, you know, I, it's my greatest wish that everyone can find that. Now, often that can result in financial gain, lucrative, you know, career in terms of money, um, position, power, prestige, whatever. Sometimes those are natural byproducts of when we're just living a more authentic, genuine, holistic, healthy life uh, and doing what we love and what our passion is because because that's what, where we're energized and we're going to do our best thinking and we're going to do our best work. Um, but not necessarily. And, and many people are incredibly happy, live incredibly abundant lives, and they have almost nothing. And so um, disentangling that term, I think, is probably helpful for people. And just a reminder that, you know, getting another car, a bigger house, you know, whatever, keeping up with the Joneses isn't a recipe for fulfillment and and living a life of abundance and, and just a healthy, healthy way of being. Um, things don't make that difference for us. Now, I, I like my toys just as much as anyone else. And I like having um, things that make life easier. But if I'm completely honest with myself, th those usually don't really bring much actual satisfaction. The satisfaction, the fulfillment that comes is through my connectedness with those around me through relationships, it's through doing work that actually matters, that's meaningful to me, that I feel is making a difference in the world and with those around me, those sorts of things. That's what gives me peace. That's what gives me joy. That's what gives me satisfaction and the stuff of life, um, the things, it, it, it's just not, that's not going to sustainably do anything for you. It really is about what makes you happy. And I have been so lucky that since I, broke up with large corporate that I have been able to help so many people figure out what is their soul calling them to do. And they have become much more lucrative from a financial standpoint. I have had two clients in the past two months who have doubled their income. And my average total compensation increase right now is 31%. And people, when they resonate at a higher level, they feel better and they're connected to themselves. That comes across in their energy, the way that they speak, the way that they represent themselves so that that negotiation, when it does come to financial abundance, 
they are solving problems. They know exactly how to use that mental fitness and emotional intelligence to ask for what they're worth and for what they want. And if that sounds too pie in the sky, I have example after example after example of when people, I mean, I have a woman who is a cancer nurse who the pandemic just really rocked her world, like so many people. She was bursting out crying because of stress and just burnt out. And she didn't even know, like this depression crept in. And after working with the program, the six week to seven week program, coaching, purpose work, she's gone from, there's a, there's a positive intelligence score. She increased her score by 60 points and now is brainstorming and um, just won an award for her productivity and her team is loving this new person that they're seeing because she's being authentic and she's back to who she was meant to be and I got to see her transformation and that is the beauty of what I do and that is why I love what I do. Yeah and the, and the last piece of this perhaps before we close is um, you focus on this in terms of career path, high, highly productive people, high achievers to have really successful, engaging, meaningful, purposeful uh, careers, right? But yeah. you also talk about how that connects with life and, and life more generally. And totally. I, th I think that's an incredibly important thing to zoom out on, you know, zoom out and look at the big picture, not just uh, we spend a ton of time at work. So it's good if you're seeking meaning and purpose and fulfillment in life, it's important to, you know, find that at work because we're spending more than a third, sometimes half of our waking hours, uh, or, or excuse me, at more than a third or half of our total time every day. And the majority of our waking hours, um, just at work, but, but life is much bigger than work. And so talk just a minute about that. And then we'll wrap up for today. Life is so much bigger than work. It's about really focusing on, for example, I am a career coach for executives and women in STEAM, but I'm also a Zumba instructor because I love to dance and I love teaching people fitness. But then I'm also like, I do different things to fill my soul. Am I bootstrapping it as an entrepreneur? Maybe. Do I have the opportunity to grow? Yes. But if I weren't doing what I'm doing and on this path that the universe put in front of me, I would not be able to help and have that ripple effect for your listeners or for the people who work for me. So my life has become so much more lucrative, so much more rich and soulful and holistic. Do I make a lot of money teaching Zuma? No, but do I have a blast being the DJ and teaching people how to have fun and move, especially when a pandemic is happening? Yeah, because that is how you have to move. You have to do something different. And is it easy? No, you have to have positivity, consistency, and resilience and, and agility in order to get there. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Shelly. It's been a real pleasure talking with you today. Before we close, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your organization, uh, the coaching that you do, etc. And then give us the final word on the topic for today. Awesome. Thank you. People can reach me on LinkedIn under Shelly, and it is spelled a little differently. It's C-H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, Johnson. They also can reach out to me at my website, which is best, B-E-S-T-U-Y-O-U, -U, careeradvantage.com. And I'm also on Facebook under Best You Career Advantage. And my last tip of the day is follow your gut. If your gut is leading you to do something different and the pain of staying in a role that no longer fits you, no longer aligns with your values, if that pain is, if the pain of not living your, to your soul is greater, then it's time for you to make a change and time to amplify your awesome. Follow your gut because what is waiting for you is way bigger and greater than you could ever have imagined. Excellent. Thank you, Shelly. I completely agree. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Shelly can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you have a great week.
we are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.